Well, I had two options. I had one option, which was like, don't talk to this kid ever again. Or option two, not let it split us apart. Right. Which is what she would, which is what she wanted. After the whole situation with Jake Paul, Logan Paul, and Alyssa Violet, Jake Paul told Shane Dawson that he only had two options. So in this video, we're gonna talk about pride, winning versus losing, as well as how to cut people out of your life. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. So what I like to do, I like to pull different topics from the YouTube community to try to use those as lessons to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So this is one of my last videos about the Shane Dawson series, Inside the Mind of Jake Paul. And I've been doing a lot of videos about it and there's so many just good topics that I know a lot of you can benefit from when we talk about it from a mental health standpoint. So I, I read like pretty much all the comments, like. Most of the comments I do my best to read and reply and all that. And there's, Maya, what are you doing? <laughs> and there's a lot of comments just about, you know, Logan Paul being terrible, you know, Alyssa being terrible, Jake being terrible, all this. Like, let's get it straight. A lot of people in this series <laughs> have been a hot mess. Who Shane like is interviewing and stuff. Just hot messes all around. After doing all the research and hearing all the different sides of the story, hearing your guys' sides and everybody's sides, what I realized was, I think the idea of choosing sides and being like, oh, you're the bad guy. Oh, she's the bad guy. She's the bad guy. Oh, Alyssa's the bad one. Oh, Faze is the bad one. Or, oh, Jake's the bad one. I think it all, at the end of the day, like, doesn't even matter. Because right. when you look at it, everybody is kind of on the same level on all sides. But what's interesting to me and why I want to make this video is I, I when I work with clients like I've seen a lot of people say this like say the things that Jake said right where Jake told Shane that he only had two options one of them was to let Alyssa Violet win if he just didn't talk to Logan Paul or two it was to just you know keep you know living life with Logan Paul well I had two options I had one option which was like don't talk to this kid ever again or option two, not let it split us apart. Right. Which is what she would, which is what she wanted. Right. And I chose option two, and it was a lot harder of an option mm -hmm. because that, like mentally I had to like cope with it and it still like haunts me like to this day. And like, this is not the case because I know a lot of you think that as well. So the first topic I want to talk about is pride and winning and losing. Like I was just talking to Tristan about this because I was going to make it just one video about boundaries and setting people up. But like the whole winning and losing aspect of it, like you guys, like that is our pride. That is our ego. Like think about how many times you have just been mentally and emotionally distraught because of your concern over winning or losing. Like th that's how I was. I spent a lot of my life being just in turmoil, causing my own suffering because I didn't want the other person to win. How many times did I keep engaging in an argument or did I stay upset or did I let this person occupy space in my brain because I didn't want them to win? Think about that. Like This is one of the reasons why meditation and mindfulness is so, so important because we do so many things in our life. We act and react based on our pride and ego. And a lot of times we don't even realize that we're doing it. So Jake Paul, what he's saying is like, if I stop talking to Logan, then she wins, right? But like the thing, like he he's he's looking at these lesser of two evils, right? Like, oh, these are both gonna suck. Like, who cares if Alyssa Violet wins? Like, you guys, do you know how I keep my sanity having a YouTube channel? Like, you see so many YouTubers out there talking about YouTube burnout. You you see them talking about reading the comments, getting upset, and everything. And like, I made a video the other day. Like, I do not lose sleep over the comment section. You know why? You know why? Because I don't care if some random person thinks they won. I'm gonna give you all a lesson real quick in how I manage my mental health on social media. So I am somebody who like, I will state my opinion, you know, and uh, uh, as nicely and kindly as I can. Sometimes I can come off a little tough love and, and things like that, but Here's the thing, so when I'm on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram and somebody says something, you know, if they comment on one of my posts or they say something that I disagree with, here's my method, okay? I'm gonna teach it all to you. I leave one comment, maybe two, then I back away and I never check it again. 
okay? The old Chris never could have done that. You wanna know why? Because I couldn't let that person think they won. I couldn't let that person think they won, right? And like, think about how crazy that is. How much time, how much energy did I spend going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth with this person? And, and here's something that I had to realize. I had to get this moment of clarity. Like, how hard is it to change my mind? How hard is it to change my beliefs on something? It's really hard. So it's kind of crazy for me to think that I can change your opinion on something by going back and forth with you for hours or days on end. You see what I mean? So like, I leave a comment, like you'll see me do it in the comment section when people come up over and sass me on something, like I might just state some facts, drop some logic on them or whatever, and then they'll reply 50 more times and I have backed away from it. That's how I keep my sanity. I do not care if that person thinks they won in their reality. I'm fine with that. And I really, really, really think a lot of you watching this can benefit from this. If you're somebody who struggles with like anger issues or you have like these types of like relationship issues, like think about how many arguments you've gotten with your significant other and you just had to do something because you didn't want them to win. Did it make anything better? Typically it doesn't, right? Like there's there's that old saying like, would you rather be right or would you be rather be happy? For me, I'm always, always, I would rather be happy, you know? So I really want you to think about that. And I think if Jake would have acknowledged that in his situation with Alyssa Violet and uh, Logan, like, I think his mental health would have been a little bit better. Because again, I don't make these videos for Jake Paul, Logan Paul, and Alyssa Vida. I make these for you. I want you to address how these things are affecting you in your life and really think about these things. So the, the second topic I wanna to talk about is like cutting people out of your life. This is something that I deal with a lot. So I, I come from you know the industry of drug and alcohol treatment centers. And for me, things are very black and white very black and white. Like if you are watching this and you're in recovery or you're overcoming addiction, like one of my tips is you gotta think of this in very black and white. You gotta think of this as life and death. Like that makes all of my decisions so much easier. It's like, keep this person in my life or die, right? So just to give you some context of what I mean, like I, I personally had to cut my best friend out of my life. I had to cut him out of my life when I got sober because he was still drinking and using drugs. And if I hung out with him, he would have taken me down with him. And this is a guy I grew up with. And I'm like, like, look, dude, I love you, but I can't hang out with you, right? And like, did he get upset? Did he get mad? Of course he did. Of course he did. We've known each other forever. His family is like my family. But I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, three years later, he came to me and asked me to take him to treatment. And now my best friend has three years sober. Do you know how I got the courage to do that? from my mother, all right? My mom, when my mom first got sober, her best friend in the world was still drinking. Her best friend that she knew for decades was still drinking, and my mom had to cut him out of uh, her life. Her best friend in the world, this guy was there through thick and thin, right? She had to cut him out of her life. And when I was six months sober, when I was six months sober, this man who was like my uncle passed away from alcoholism. And it wasn't that my mom didn't love him, it's just she would have died too. But when he was in the hospital, because his body was shutting down because of alcoholism, she was by his bedside every single day. But seeing my mom do that and setting that boundary with her best friend helped me know that I could set boundaries with other people and get them out of my life. So like, I just don't buy it. I don't like, I have people tell me all the time like, but Chris, but Chris, I can't cut them out of my life. That's my best friend. But Chris, I can't cut them out of my life. They're my mom, they're my dad. And I just sit there and I'm just like, the F you can't? Like, what do you mean you can't? Of course you can. The problem is, is that you're worried about how they're gonna feel, how they're gonna think, right? You, again, you're valuing their opinion more than your own, right? You are valuing, you are putting them ahead of your own mental and emotional stability. So like, if I was in Jake's situation, like Logan Paul, like, pff, peace out. Peace out, like, and not forever. So this is a balance, because I talked to you guys about black and white thinking. There's balance that comes with this, because, People with black and white thinking cut people out of their lives constantly. So if any of you know somebody with borderline personality disorder, this is why that happened. So like, I'm somebody who struggles with a lot of black and white thinking, and I have to find this balance. So the way I find this balance is some stuff I went really in depth on, on how I forgave my alcoholic mom, if you guys wanna go check that video out. But basically, I told my mom, like at, at a certain point, I told my mom, I said, listen mom, I love you, I love you more than anything, you're my mom, you saved my life, I love you so much, but right now I am not in a place where we can have a relationship. And I cut her out of my life for about three, 
three or four months, just didn't talk to her at all. But then after I, after I was able to heal, after she was able to heal a little bit, we came back together and now my mom and I have an amazing relationship. But what you see with Jake Paul and Logan Paul, and some of you are still having these issues, is because you aren't giving each other time to heal, right? You're staying in it. You're staying in that cycle. So neither one of you had time to heal. I don't think in this situation, Logan Paul really needed time to heal, but Jake definitely did, but he's constantly around him, constantly around him. Like you guys, we have to set up boundaries. Like ask yourself these questions. Why won't you set this boundary? Why won't you cut this person out of your life? Um, at the new treatment center I'm working at, like we, uh, we were talking about interventions the other day, myself and the therapist I work with. And it's, it's saddening to see how families won't set boundaries with their drug addicted or alcohol addicted loved one. Cause they're like, oh, but they'll get mad at me. They'll get upset. It's like, okay. That's fine, like again, we are way too worried about what other people are going to think in that situation. We need to take care of ourselves before we can take care of anybody else. Like think about it, think about it. Like I'm a father, if I keep toxic people in my life, I can't be the best father I can be to my son because I'm uh, surrounding myself with chaos and people who screw me over. So like, I have to set boundaries not only for me, but for my son, right? My girlfriend. If I keep toxic people in my life, it's gonna occupy space in my head and I can't be a good boyfriend to her. So like, boundaries are important. It's not just about you and the other person. It's about the other people who are involved in your life as well, all right? So I really want you to think about that. Okay, so let's do this down in the comments below. If you are somebody who has a problem with boundaries and cutting people out, out of your life who should be cut out of your life, whether it's family member, significant other, friend, like let's have a chat about it down in the comments below. But let me know, like what is your fear? What is your fear? All right, let's talk and let's support each other and let's set up some boundaries today, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for you with this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to help support me, spread a message of hope when it comes to mental health, make sure you click or tap on that Patreon icon right there, all right? Thanks so much for watching. Set up some boundaries today and I will see you next time.